Hey, it's Katrina Sawa here, the Jumpstart Your Biz Coach with jumpstartyourmarketing.com. And, you know, one of the things I reflected on in the last couple of weeks was really getting clear. I've always been clear, but getting clear on and staying clear with my purpose, my purpose, uh, why I'm here, what I'm meant to do in this world, how I'm meant to serve uh, others, and uh, staying clear and focused with what matters most to me and my family right now, because just like when you're in an airplane, they tell you to put your mask on first before you can help others. This is what I think um, has been coming up for me. And although I have a huge amount of compassion and love for the planet and every human being on it, I really, really honestly feel that way. Um, I have to do what's right for me first, right? Just like I would tell you if you're a coaching client, I probably have said that to you. If you're not, then think about what matters most to you first that's going to bring you joy, bring you more love, bring you potentially more money in your bank account, bring you a better sense of clarity, purpose, and uh, just overall happiness. That is what is most important for you, me, everyone, I think, to be looking at right now, looking within, looking what is going to make us happy, make sure we're not settling in the wrong places with the wrong people, with the wrong circle of friends, whoever that may be, making sure that you are putting your own oxygen mask on first. I don't care what's going on in the world, honestly, if you don't do that first, you're doing no one any good right? No one, especially yourself and your family. So for me right now, I've got a lot of stuff going on within my family, right? And if you haven't seen me be vocal online about politics and things, it's because I don't want to talk about politics. I choose not to talk about politics because that is a negative energy drain on me. And I am very much an intuitive empath. And anything around me that is hugely negative has a huge impact on my energy and what I can actually give to not only myself, but to my, my stepdaughter, my husband, my mother, who's currently living with us, and all my clients. And if my energy goes negative or gets affected, then everything that I do ripples out in that way. And I can't afford for that to happen to affect as many people as I affect. So I have to watch my energy because of that. And so I, I fully believe that uh, we, we all should be watching our own energies, our own um, passions, our own needs and what we need. I know I still need eight hours, eight hours of sleep a night. I need to drink lots of fluids. I need healthy stuff too, right, in my diet. Um, I need love and attention from my family and my kid and my, my clients. I need, um, I need that joy. I need to be able to make sure I can uh, fill my own tank every day. I have this thing that I did one time when I was in some relationship training, and I can't grab it, um, when I was single and looking for a man, I, uh, I went to three different relationship courses, in case you didn't know. <laughs> I, uh, I told my story about the love side of my life and how I was in my starter marriage. Uh, and I was in it two years too long, frankly. I was so unhappy those last two years, but I didn't let it show. I went to networking events and would, people would say, how's everything going? And I'd be like, oh, everything's great. You know, faking it, totally faking it to the public and the world. And then I would go home and cry myself to sleep um, because I wasn't getting affection, attention. And as I started my own business, this was you know, probably 18 years ago, <laughs> uh, I wasn't getting the support from my significant other, the one person 
that was supposed to have my back and really be my biggest cheerleader was not and was in fact harming my energy and doing them saying things that were negative to that and that was really it was really hard for me to get through that and in those relationship workshops afterwards I, when I was realizing what kind of man I really needed in my life to make me thrive to support me I realized there were some things that I needed to change in order to uh, be the right woman that that man that I'm describing I was describing needed to be with so I had to up level myself I had to up level my own game and my own way of being around men and who and how I was being open to a relationship and what I really wanted um, and so in those relationship workshops we did this exercise on the four qualities it's the four qualities that it's kind of like your uh, the values conversation right where we go to the values conversation of uh, what you truly believe you know for me integrity is huge you got to do what you say and say what you do right or I don't really have time for people that don't do that anymore and uh, at 50 years old I can do that it's my choice to be around the people that I want to be around and not be around the people that I don't want to be around frankly right and you have that choice too I don't care how old you are but some of us don't realize it until we're in our 70s for God's sakes that we can actually have a voice we can actually take a charge of that oh, I just hate to see us wait so long for that that means you're settling it means you're settling for something other than what you really truly want and believe in those relationship courses though they they had us narrow these things down like if you so this is the question that they asked um, if you could wish one thing on your very best friend, okay the person that you love the most one thing what would it be right and we had a whole first we brainstormed a whole list of different things like what's important to me well integrity uh, honesty happiness love um, joy uh, gratitude I mean you name all these things off right you might have a list of 60 or 70 words that mean something to you right mean something to you so do that brain dump and then go through all the words and say if you could only choose one of those words and wish that on your most loved person in this universe what is that one thing that you wish for them right we want so much more for our loved ones right but love love was the one thing that was on top because I know that if if we have love if we are feeling love for ourselves if we're giving love if we're being loved um, if we have love around us and loving feelings around us uh, I mean I just know that not only will your life be better but the world will be better because you're gonna be a better person right if we could just teach all the criminals out there that they just need love right and actually have them believe it and do something about it then maybe we wouldn't have so much crime the point is I did uh, this little exercise and it ended up being like you take your top four so you take your top four qualities so mine were love I'll put you in my thing I made a little like a mini little vision board about it and I keep it in my office to remind me that these are the things that fill my tank these are the things that make me be able to serve at 150% to my clients, to my family, to my husband, to my daughter, and to myself. If I don't fill these tanks first, forget about it, right? I'm not at 100% and I need to be focusing on me first so I can do better with the people that I love and come in contact with in this world. So it's love. Oops. <laughs> uh, love happiness passion and faith love happiness passion and faith what are your four qualities right what are your four qualities do a list brainstorm it see what comes up for you because what if you're not 
filling your tank every day, right? When I was single, and because love was my number one quality, when I was single, I was like, well, how am I supposed to fill my tank? I don't have anybody, right? But then I thought about it. What else brings me love? What else brings me love? You know what I thought about? Dogs. <laughs> I love dogs. I had a German Shepherd at the time, Zeke, who was my baby because I didn't have kids uh, up until now I have a stepdaughter, but that was before. I didn't have any kids. So my dog. So everybody's pets though. I mean, I would just like, I would call my friends and I'd say, can I come over and visit your kid and your dog? <laughs> it was dogs. It was kids, kids, kids. Anytime I was around kids, I mean, I didn't really want to have kids. I didn't want to give birth and be pregnant. I love kids and I'm glad I have a stepdaughter, but I didn't want to actually go through the process of having a kid. <laughs> that was just me. But I'm so glad I have a kid now. I'm just glad I didn't have to do that. Anyways, the point is that when I was thinking, what else can bring me love, right? It's being around other people's kids. So I would call my friends up who had you know, young kids or even teenagers or whatnot. I'd be like, can I come over and hang out with your kid? I just want to hang out, play games or whatever, you know? <laughs> so those are some things that, that brought me love. Kids, dogs. So I would go to the park. I would hang out with friends. I would be a third wheel if I had to, um, to fill my love tank. I'd be around other couples that were happy, right, at the time. Uh, and now I like to be around other happy couples as well. In fact, a lot of times when I'm looking for a mentor or a coach, I will make sure they have a really happy love relationship because I was in a coaching relationship with somebody and hired them when I thought they did have a loving relationship and come to find out she was faking it and they ended up getting a divorce, but she hadn't been honest with herself or her followers. And so they were portraying pretty much a lie in my opinion maybe they were trying to work it out I don't know but it was it wasn't an honest thing that I perceived and so therefore I felt a little betrayed because that's one of the main reasons that I was following this person and uh, one of my coaches now has a really loving relationship and uh and I realized that some of the coaches in the past I didn't click with because they didn't have a loving relationship. Isn't that interesting, right? So something I, something I really take into consideration when I hire someone now is that, uh, that they have a love-filled relationship because that means they're going to have similar values to me. So why am I talking about all of this today? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I was hoping that someone needed to hear it. And I obviously needed to get it out. I'm on the verge of tears at the moment. Um, because it means that much to me. It means that much to me, not only for me to be happy and in a really good love relationship and a good love place uh, with myself, my clients. Um, but I want that for you. I want I want everybody to be in their best love relationship with yourself, with significant others. I am so passionate about that. And a lot of times when I'm talking to people about their business or their marketing and they're not doing what I'm asking them to do, we look at their love life because a lot of times they're either not happy where they are they're not happy with themselves, they're not happy in the relationship that they have, or they don't have a relationship and want one, and they haven't really spent the time to focus on how important that really is. And therefore, it's trickling into the lack of the motivation, uh, lack of motivation or the lack of doing that's required to get in front of more people in your business, right? So... Think about that and take a look at your own love life, your own love for yourself. And, uh, you know, one of the, the, when I started talking about love, I created a, a live event. I did back in 2009 in January, I was at my friend's live event and I proclaimed, I said, I am going to throw a live event. It's going to be about love and money. And I don't know what else, 
but it's going to be in November and everybody should come. And I said that in front of like 200 people, right? It, that November, I had my very first Love and Money Business Summit. And it was great. I came out with the seven steps to uh, love and money business model and all that. And it was a great event. And every year I've been doing it every year. Now I changed the name this, uh, I don't know, three or four years ago, I changed the name to love and money live. And it just felt a little bit more fresh and uh, it's not always about business. Right. So I wanted to make sure I bring in sometimes some speakers that talk about mindset that talk about image, body image, uh, self love, uh, affirmations, uh, woo woo stuff. Even, um, that's the event that's kind of fun because I get to bring in that side of me, uh, and the love side of me, uh, as well as making money in your business, which is so important. <laughs> I think you need both. You need the being and the doing. So the love side is the being the, the, the money side is the doing what to do in your business. You've heard that, right? What do you need to do? Can't be all doing. You have to be doing and being. Um, and so if you're doing one and not the other, if you're being and not doing, you're probably not getting anywhere and making a lot of money. If you're doing, but not being, you're probably going to hit a plateau at some point where you need to dive into the being and the love side of your life. So that's, that's what love and money means to me. And I'm, I've decided that, well, because my Love and Money Live event got canceled in April due to the COVID, I wasn't going to have one this year. I thought, well, I'll just do it again next year. But something is calling in me. It's this love stuff and this passion. And I'm seeing too many people out there not filled with love, who need love, who want love, who are dying for more love in their life one way or the other and I decided I just I need to do this virtually and I don't know what I, I do know what it looks like um, as I'm recording this it's I haven't even built the sales page for it yet so um, but I know what I'm gonna do during this event and it's gonna be an experience for those people who want to come and join me. It's not going to be multi-speaker. It's me and you and a few really passionate souls who want to make some changes in their own life and then have it trickle out to the people that you're affecting in a positive, loving, good way. And make a lot of money doing it because <laughs> it's very important. Okay, so loveandmoneylive.com as you're watching this, I have no idea if that sales page is up yet or not, but if it is, get registered. It's coming up soon. It's gonna be at the end of June. If it's not up or it's over when you're watching this video, because that could be true too, go there anyways, and I'm sure you'll be taken to my live event page where you'll find out about webinars and upcoming calls and things that you can join me on regardless. Um, so I hope this is helpful for you today and uh, oh and you can buy my book if you want you know what I have actually a pretty good sized box of these books right now if anybody needs more love in your life this is the book you want to get this is the book and I'm gonna sign them off and ship them to you right now if you want to go get a book just go to loveyourselfsuccessful.com loveyourselfsuccessful.com You'll see the book down on the page and it's a way discounted price right now for that on that page. There's also a free video there, I think. Um, and, uh, but do something, do something to fill your tank this week and uh, this month, this year, right? Fill your own tank first and then you'll be better off serving others and helping others and being there for others. So have a love filled life. You guys, I'll talk to you soon.